Hi everyone, welcome back in for game two of our doubleheader here today. As the Fort Scott Greyhounds take on the Allen Red Devils, just about ready to get things started here in game number two of this doubleheader. Leading off for the Red Devils, and the first pitch is grounded out towards short. Picked by Fort Scott, low throw and it gets away. On down to second base is the batter, that is Yarn Reinhardt. First batter on and over to second base for for uh, the Red Devils and now they bunt to first and not enough time to make the play there so everybody's safe. That is Cale Clark, he's the DH here in game two. And he reaches on a bunt single. Up to third is Reinhardt. We'll get the scoreboard updated here in just a minute. Second baseman. Garrett Rush is now batting. And he's got a 2-0 oh count on him. Two and one. Starting pitcher for the Greyhounds here in game two is JT Adams. He's now got a two and two count on him on the batter. Fort's got one the first game in eight innings. So this game should be a seven inning game as well. Called third strike, so nice job to come back and get the first out of the inning. So now Parker Martin will step up. Parker Martin, the shortstop today, hitting in the cleanup spot here in game two. First pitch to him here. That's roped into right center field. That's going to score a run. from runner from first oh well, he did stop at second I thought he went around to third so runners on first and second now after Martin singles to right field and scores the first run of the game now Anthony Talpa will come in he was a pinch hitter in the first game. That ball gets away from the catcher and down 90 feet go both runners. pitch that's low. Two balls and one strike now.
Three balls and two strikes now on the batter. Anthony Talpa is at first base here in game two. Pinch hit for the DH in the first game. He'll take a walk here. So that'll load the bases with only one out. pitch to Logan Martin he's in there for a strike Martin the third baseman here in game two And a strikeout. So another strikeout here. Two outs now. Here in the top of the first, one run already in. Caleb Horsey will will bat now. He also pinch hit in the first game. 1-0 pitch. This is grounded off his foot towards the first baseman. Foul ball. And that wind really kicking up again. through and miss, so strike two. Once again, Dorn Reinhardt leading off. He's in left field for Allen. He's already come around and scored after a base hit. Kale Clark is the DH. He's hitting second. Garrett Bush, or excuse me, Garrett Rush hitting third. He's at second base. We'll finish the lineup in just a moment, and we'll do it at the next half inning as that ball is flied out to left field, and that will finish the top of the first. So Allen does get a run, but that's all they get. And they lead it one to nothing going to the bottom of the first here at Lions Stadium. This is Greyhound Baseball on Duckbait TV. So your lineup for the Fort Scott Greyhounds here in game number two is going to look very similar, actually exactly the same as the lineup for game number one. Uh, leading off, playing right field, Mike Polabinski. Hitting uh, second, playing third is Luke Stout. 
Batting third, playing first, is Jarrett Nelson. The catcher, Ty Golusky, is going to clean things up. Left fielder, Joey Little, bats fifth. Hitting sixth is Cord Dobrinsky. He'll be the DH here in game number two. Aiden Slot bats seventh. He's the center fielder. Maka Shigematsu bats eighth. He's at second base again. And Owen Rush is the shortstop batting ninth with JT Adams on the mound for the Greyhounds. Already threw a half inning. Here's the first pitch. And that's fouled back by Polaminski. Another foul ball, nothing in two. And now one and two as that pitch is a little bit high. Polabinski did not get a base hit in the first game, but he did reach base. It'll be a swinging strike three. They'll have to throw it down to third first, and they can't complete it as the ball got away from the catcher. So that will be a strikeout, but Wild pitch. We'll get Polabin. Polabinski to first. First pitch to Stout is fouled off right side. Stout was officially 0 for 4 in game one. Did get hit by a pitch in the sixth inning. Just outside, one ball and two strikes now on the Greyhound third baseman. That wind really kicking up now out of the south southeast. This looks like it's moving the flagpole out there for the American flag out in right field. Definitely moving the flag and just about everything else here at the ballpark today. Check the runner at first. Allen with a run in the first. Now Fort Scott trying to get it back here in the bottom of the first. Here's the pitch. Fouled off left side. Now remains two and two. Line drive caught by the first baseman. Tough luck again for the Greyhounds. It was not Stout that did that in the first game. It was Shikamatsu who did that in the first game. And it turned into a double play. That one nearly turned into a double play, but Polovinsky was able to get back to the bag. So now Jarrett Nelson bats with one out. Jared Nelson was officially 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts, but he walked twice. He was hit by a pitch once. He scored two runs, including the game-winning run in the bottom of the eighth inning for the Greyhounds in that first one. Again, Fort Scott did not lead until they took the eight.
seven. Or, uh, nine to eight. Nine to eight advantage there in the bottom of the eighth inning. First game scheduled to be a seven inning game. Second game scheduled to be a nine inning game unless the first game goes extra innings. So this one should be a seven inning as well as we did go into the eighth in the first game. Three and one now the count on Jarrett Nelson. Brandon McCarnan is the starting pitcher. For the Red Devils, this one's hit out towards left field. That wind's going to knock it down, and it's going to be caught by the left fielder. So out number two. That's a ball that on a normal day probably is out. Wind really kicking up from left field. And now Ty Galuski will step in. Got a feeling I know which walk up song is my camera guy's favorite today. Little was it Crazy Nights by the Eagles? I don't think that's the right name of that song, but it was an Eagles song nonetheless for Greyhounds backstop. Here's the ball lined into center field, coming on and making the catch is the center fielder, though, and that will be out number three. So Fort Scott able to get a base runner, but that's it. Strain him at first. We'll go to the second in just a moment. It's still 1-0 Red Devils. Leading off the top of the second, another first pitch base hit. This one for Tyler Martin. Uh, excuse me, of the Red Devils.
Here's a bunt, but it's foul. The number nine man in the batting order here today. Here in game two, Kale Puenzo. He was a leadoff man in the first game, played in right field. Now he's in center field here in game two. And the number nine batter. Nothing in two to count. Snap throw to first. Ooh, close play, but he is back safely. Strikeout. Nothing in two. This is Reinhardt, the leadoff man who singled and scored in the first inning for the Red Devils. Now foul ball. Out of play. Count will remain 0 and 2. Greyhounds trying to pull off the sweep here today. They trailed pretty much the entire way in game one. It was tied at five and tied at eight. able to get the walk-off run in the bottom of the eighth inning of game one. Here's the pitch that's low and away. Look like JT well, he kind of powered up on that one. But it missed low. Here's the one, two. There's another fastball in there and it swung on and missed. So another strikeout, second of the inning. And now there are two outs with a runner on first. For Cale Clark, he had a bunt single in the first inning. Stranded on third, though. And takes a strike there. One ball and one strike. One and two. One taken outside of the zone. Two balls and two strikes. Now grounder towards short. <laughs> nice pick. Throw to first a little bit low, but a great pick by Nelson over there as well. So great job all the way around. Owen Rush to Jarrett Nelson, and that'll retire the Red Devils here in the second. They get a base runner, but that's it on the leadoff single. They strain him at first, and we'll go to the bottom of the second. Your score, Allen 1, Fort Scott nothing. This is Fort Scott Greyhound Baseball on Duck Bait TV.
we head to the bottom of the second. Greyhounds will send Joey Little to the plate. And he's now got a 2-0 count. Little is the left fielder in game one today. Had a home run. Also scored two runs. He was hit by a pitch twice and reached on an error that ended up winning the game in, for, in game one. Three and one the count now on the Greyhounds left fielder. This one's hit out towards right field. That could be gone again up in that jet stream and it is. Second home run of the day, first of game two for Joey Little. Opposite field again. So the Greyhounds tie it up here in the bottom of the second inning, and that was, he let off the bottom of the second in game one with the home run to right field. Cord Dobrinsky will step in. Takes a first pitch strike. Cord in game one today. Had a sacrifice bunt. Also a walk, otherwise 0 for 2. It's fouled right back towards our camera. Count goes to one and two on the Greyhound designated hitter today. One, two pitch, fouled right back, same spot. Breaking ball, just missed the outside corner. And will even the count two and two. Nobody out, bottom of the second. We're tied at one. After the leadoff home run by Little, here's a ball popped up right side. And it'll get out of play. Breaking ball that just didn't break enough. Three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch, foul tip, but caught by the catcher. And that'll be out number one. Now Aiden Slot will step in. Center fielder for the Greyhounds. And this one's popped up. Wind's gonna carry it out towards right center field. And it's gonna be caught by the second baseman for out number two. Now Maka Shikamatsu. Steps in. Maka in game one. Singled and scored. In the fourth inning of that first game. He was actually three for four. And the only game and the only time he got out was a very hard line drive right at the first baseman in his first at bat. Fouls a breaking pitch off. Shortens to bunt, but bunts foul, so nothing in two. Very slow breaking ball there. 
Zach Grinke special. It's fouled back right over towards us. So the count remains nothing and two. And now low for ball one. Two pitch. This one's hit out towards left center field, coming in the left fielder, and he's going to. Did he make the catch? He did. Nice play by the left fielder, Reinhardt. Tough luck for the Greyhounds, but they do get a run and tie it up here in the bottom of the second. We'll go to the third. We're tied at one. This is Greyhound Baseball on Duckbait TV. Head to the third inning. Greyhounds are tied with the Red Devils here. And now one and two to count on the first batter here in the third inning for Allen. That's Garrett Rush. He struck out looking his first time. Two and two already to count on him. Here's the pitch. That one's high and fills the count. Strikeout. We'll start the inning, and now Parker Martin will step in. Here's the shortstop here in game two. Hit out towards left field, coming in and making the play. Joey Little, he had to time it up just a little bit, make sure he could get to it, but did, and it's out number two. First pitch to Anthony Talpa is in there for a strike. Nothing in one. JT Adams start this game very well, but he's rallied and pitched very well. Low throw there, but that'll be in time as Owen Rush had to go back on it. Jared Nelson needed to take the throw on a bounce, but did, and that'll retire the Allen Red Devils in order here in the third inning. So no runs crossed the plate 
on no hits, no errors, no one left. At the end of two and a half, it's still one to one. Allen and Fort Scott. This is Greyhound bat uh, Baseball on Duck Bay TV. First pitch to the bottom of the third is fouled off by Owen Rush. Here's the shortstop for the Greyhounds. As we start the bottom of the third here. for a strike, nothing and two. Two zero pitch on the way, just off the outside corner, good eye from Owen Rush. Owen in game one today was Two for three, had a strikeout, also an intentional walk. Strikes out here, and that'll start the inning with an out. So back to the top of the order, and Mike Polabinski, who struck out, but reached first on a wild pitch his first time. The first pitch strike in this at bat. Nice breaking ball there, but it misses. One and one. We had pretty much, we've had the wind since we got here today, but pretty much straight sunshine in game one. Now the clouds are starting to roll in a little bit. This doubleheader was originally scheduled to start at 2 this afternoon, but there is a possibility of some weather coming in this evening, so they moved it up a couple hours to hopefully get everything in. 3-1 and one is the count on the batter. Mike Polabinski. Here's the 3-1. Fouled off at the plate. Count remain, or Count goes full. So again, we were supposed to start at 2 o'clock today, moved it up a couple hours to hopefully get ahead of some of the weather. It's possibly moving in this evening. Here's the pitch. It's low and another walk for Greyhound batters. First one of this game, but they had a few in the first. Now a base runner with one out for Luke Stout. Bunt, great bunt down the third base line, and nobody can get to it. So everybody's safe. Now Jerry.
Garrett Nelson will step up. Pitch to him. He's in there for a strike. Nelson flew out to left field his first time. And is now down in the count 0-2. And this at bat. Runners on first and second. Here's the pitch. It's high. One out, bottom of the third. Greyhound's trying to rally here. Pitch is low. Good eye there from Nelson. Like he wanted to swing at that, but realized in plenty of time that it was not going to be a strike. is low. Three and two. Check on the runner at first, or excuse me, second. two on the way. Breaking ball too high and another walk for the Greyhounds here in the third inning. That'll load the bases with one out for the catcher Ty Golusky. Another great opportunity here for the Hounds. trouble capitalizing on all their good opportunities in the first game. We'll see what they can do here with the bases loaded and one out. Bottom of the third. Tie game. For Ty Golusky at the plate. First, excuse me, first pitch is fouled back to the screen. Nothing in one. and two is Ty fouls another pitch back. I think he thought that ball was going to break over the middle of the plate. He had a swing like he was trying to hit that ball to Uniontown. And with the win today, it might get there. Pitch is high. So one and two. Fouled back against the screen again. One ball and two strikes. Again, don't forget, we'll be up on the hill next Saturday. Greyhound softball team will be at home. We'll have their doubleheader next Saturday. The following Saturday on the 20th, we'll be right back here at Lions Stadium. Field. The Greyhound softball team has converted Ty Kohler field into their main field now. It is an all-turf field, so that's where we'll be next Saturday. And a called third strike, and Ty knew it. 
just a little bit too late on the decision, and it'll be a strikeout. So two outs now, bases still loaded for the Hounds. Pitch low. So 2 0 now, Joey Little. And that home run to lead off the second. That tied the game. This one's poked into left field. Will it get down? It will. This might score two. He got by the left fielder. Maybe even three. Here comes Nelson. He will score into third is Little. And he's got the two most difficult. legs of the cycle if they count that as a triple I would as that ball was the wind is almost swirling now They're really playing havoc and I think they've called that a triple so a three run score for the Hounds they now lead it four to one Two and oh, the count. Now on Cord Dobrinsky, that one catches the inside part of the plate. Two balls and one strike. Two outs, runner on third. And four RBI for Joey Little. He has knocked in all four runs so far in game two for the Greyhounds. Ball's fouled off right side. That'll get out of play over by the Greyhound hitting facility. Three balls and two strikes now on designated hitter for the Greyhounds. Again, Fort Scott using the exact same lineup here in game two that they had for game one. Allen's lineup a little bit different. A couple of guys switched from positions. A couple extra guys in the lineup. The 3-2 pitch hits Cord. He'll reach first. Now runners on the corner. And the inning's still alive here for the Greyhounds. So Aiden Slot will come in. He grounded out to second his first time. First pitch misses off the inside corner. Brandon McCannon, or McCarnan, the starting pitcher for Allen, and now they're going to get or have a meeting at the mound. He had a pretty good first inning, he, first couple innings, really. He struck out the first batter he faced, Polabinski. Now the, the wild pitch that resulted in Polabinski reaching first, but he was stranded at first. A line out, fly out, or two, and two fly outs into the first inning. Then after the home run, solo homer to lead off the second by Little, he got a strike out, a ground out, and a fly out to end the second. But here in the third, he has faced some problems, and Fort, Fort Scott has made him pay for those. They now lead it four to one. There are two outs, but still runners on the corners. Lefty has the sign, readies and delivers, but it's high, 2-0. Oh. Good eye by slot. If he can reach, it'll be Shigematsu once again. This one's
Jones popped up. Will it stay on the infield? That wind is going to blow it towards foul ground. It is going to be caught, though. Nice job by the second baseman, Garrett Rush, to go over and make that play. That is a ball that ordinarily would have probably been caught in the normal spot for a second baseman. But the wind blew it all the way to foul territory. Still caught, though, for and out. Fort Scott does score three. Here in the third, and they take a four to one lead. We'll be back in just a moment with the fourth inning. This is Crayon Baseball on Duck Bait TV. First pitch of the top of the fourth. It missed the strike zone. Nothing in one or one and zero. Oh. Here's the pitch. This one's fouled off. That'll be a strike. This one's fouled off. This pitch is fouled off left side. Caleb Horsey now one and one on the count. Yeah, I'm not sure. Ground ball right side. That'll get through for a base hit. On to third is Martin. That looks better. goes from first. There's a ball hit out towards left field. It's caught. Here comes a throw and it's not going to be, they're not going to try to run the runner. Nice job by Joey Little out there in left field. He is all over this game so far for the Greyhounds. As he was able to get to that ball and get it in quickly. And runners have to retreat. Now the number nine man in the order, Cale Cluenso. In center field here in game two. He's going to ground this one foul.
and one pitch that is in there for a strike. Swing and a miss. So a strike out there. And now there are two outs as Bjorn Reinhardt will go back to the plate. Ground ball right side. Nice pick by Wakama by Shigematsu, excuse me but he has no play. He got over there to keep the ball from getting into the outfield, but couldn't come up with it to make a play at first, so everybody's safe. The runner from third scores and makes it four to two. Could have been worse than that had Maka not gotten to that ball cleanly, or had not gotten to the ball. Now 2-0 on the next hitter. Runners on first and second. Here's the pitch. This one's hit fouled on the left field line. It's going to get out of play. trying to frame that one, but it was a little bit low and inside. Kale Clark has a three and one count now. This one's hit to left field. A nice jump by Joey Little. He'll chase it down and that'll be out number three. A run does score, but that's all they get. Here in the fourth inning, it is now Fort Scott four and Allen two. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth in just a few moments. This is Fort Scott Greyhound Baseball on Duckbait TV. Bottom of the fourth inning starts with Maka Shigematsu for the Greyhounds. And first pitch is inside. Ground ball to first. Routine play there for Anthony Talpa, and that's out number one. Owen Rush now will hit. He is 0 for 1 here in game two. And 
And now 0-2 on Rush. He struck out his first time. That led off the third inning that ended up being a three-run inning for the Greyhounds. Out one and two. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch. That's outside. And ball four. So Rush takes a walk. And now Mike Polabinski will step back up. He walked and scored his last time back in the third. Bunt. Oh, a great bunt right out in front of third base. Throw to first. Naughty time and gets away. Everybody's safe, and now everybody's going to move up. And here comes the runner, Rush. He will score as that ball not only got away from the first baseman, but it got up the right field line a bit. So another run here for the Greyhounds. And now Polabinski is out at second base. Still one out, but now five to two in favor of the Greyhounds. Luke Stout is one for two. Ooh, swung through and missed. Foul tipped that one. Sounded like, looked like he was just right, he was right on it, just missed it. This one's hit out towards left center. Not much of a move there for Reinhardt, the right fielder, or left fielder rather. He'll make the play, and that's out number two. So now Jarrett Nelson comes up. He walked and scored in the third. He's also flied out to left field. Now time call. Right-handed batter, left-handed pitcher. Pitch high and tight, 1-0. Carnan is the first left-handed pitcher that Allen has thrown today. They threw three guys in the first inning, all righties. McCarnan, the only pitcher they've used so far here in game two. 2-0 two oh the count. Now the pitch, a little bit high. 3 and 0. Foul ball at the plate. 
Cal goes to three and one. Five to two year score, runner on second, two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Fort Scott Greyhounds lead the Allen Red Devils. Trying to complete a league sweep here today. Must have been a pitch, pitch clock violation there. It turns into a walk. Now Ty Galuski will step in. If runners on first and second for the Greyhounds. Foul ball. Kind of like it nicked the catcher's mask just a little bit. off left side that'll get out of play might hit the Allen bus nothing into the count now oh, that one's poked out towards center field that's gonna get down for a base hit might score three or two one run is in here comes the second as Nelson rounds the back throw is not in time and it's actually gonna get away from the catcher and up to third, they will get him. Oh, they say he got under the tag. Nice job by Galuski. So two more runs score for the Greyhounds. They lead it now seven to two. First pitch here to Joey Little is in there for a strike. And he is a double and single shy of the cycle here today. Here's the pitch off the inside corner. Breaking ball there that just didn't break enough. Stays outside. Count goes to two and one. And now three and one as they miss again high and away. Rounded a third, this should be out number three, and it is. As Logan Martin snags it quickly, gets it over to Taupa, and that'll retire the Greyhounds. But three more runs score in the frame, and Fort Scott leads it seven to two as we head to the fifth in just a few moments. This is Greyhound Baseball on Duckbait TV.
first pitch of the top of the fifth is roped into right center field. That's going to get up against the wall. It'll be extra bases for the Allen leadoff batter. That is Garrett Rush, the second baseman, with the double to right center field. Quickly, a runner out there at second here in the fifth for the Red Devils. And that will bring Parker Martin back to the plate. Parker Martin is one for two today, single back in the first. Two and zero, the count now on Parker Martin. There's three Martin kids on this Red Devil team. I think we've seen all three of them here in action today. Two and one, the count. That one's outside, so three and one now. And that one's outside for a ball four. So pretty good game so far for JT Adams. Now we're going to have Coach Hill come out to the mound. This may be a pitching change. We'll see. Can't quite tell. Somebody's warming up in the bullpen from our angle here. But Coach Hill was moving pretty quickly out there to the mound. Foul ball, one ball and one strike now to Anthony Talpa. He did not start the first game, but he did come in and pinch hit. Starts the second game here at first base. Now two and one. Again, Allen just a little bit under 500 overall on the record. Five and 14 now. In the Jayhawk Conference. This one's fouled off and out of play. Two balls and two strikes. That one, he did go. He tried to hold up but couldn't. And that's strike three. Tough luck there for Talpa. Great pitch by JT. As he really handcuffed Talpa that time. First pitch to Logan Martin, and this at bat is low. This one's fouled off right side, and it will get out of play. One ball and one strike. One out. Runners on first and second. For the Allen Red Devils from Iola, Kansas. Here's the pitch. 
Another foul ball. Will it stay in play? It will not. Just did miss on the one two. JT kind of. A couple extra seconds looking in at home plate umpire. Here's the pitch as he's ready to go and does get the third strike there. Looked like a quick pitch that time by JT and maybe caught Logan Martin by surprise. Either way, it works out for a strikeout for the Greyhounds. Now two outs with two on. Top of the fifth. This one's hit into center field. Coming on and it's going to fall in front of the center fielder and nice throws get in and keep the runner from first Parker Martin going to third on the play Garrett Rush will score from second just a single for Caleb Horsey Runner another run scores here for the Red Devils, so it's now seven to three, two and oh, the count. Tyler Martin, the catcher at the plate. Here's the pitch. 3 0 the count. Martin, the catcher here in game two. Reese Rovers was the catcher in game one. And a four pitch walk here to Martin. A lot of base runners all day long here in this one, and that looks like it will be the end of the day for JT Adams. Pretty good outing for him. He gave up a run in the first inning, but was solid then through the back end of the, set, the first, second, third. Gave up a run and a couple of base runners in the fourth, got his pitch count up, and now he will retire to the dugout with two outs and the bases loaded here in the top of the fifth. So the new pitcher for the Hounds is Lucas Rodenberg. He's a 6'2", 215-pound right-hander from Richmond, Missouri. Sophomore for the Greyhounds. He's 
in nine appearances so far this spring. He's got a 1-0 record with three saves. Ten and two-thirds innings. He's allowed nine hits. No runs. Walked three, struck out five. And is yet to allow an earned run so far. See if he can hopefully keep that going here for the Greyhounds. First pitch is grounded towards second. They'll go to first. And that will retire the side here in the frame. So one pitch and one out for Lucas Rodenberg. Allen gets one run, but that's all they get. They strand the bases loaded. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. It's still 7-3 Fort Scott. This is Fort Scott Greyhound Baseball on Duck Bay TV. Dobrinsky will lead off the inning. For the Greyhounds, first pitch to him. A little bit high. Looks like we do have a new pitcher for the Red Devils. Get you that information here in just a moment. Line drive to third, and it's caught by the third baseman, Logan Martin. Well, that you could hit it anything harder than that. And in a good place, Martin had to lay out for it, but he did make the catch. So Aiden Slot will hit with one out and nobody on. Here in the bottom of the fifth. This one's hit a little bit higher down the third base. It's going to get in the left field. So base hit for slot. He'll stop it first. Nice turn there, but he'll stop it first. And now Maka Shikamatsu will hit. So one ball and one strike now to the Hawaiian second baseman for the Greyhounds.
Runner goes, throw down to second, not in time. Stolen base for Aiden Scott, a slot. So two balls and one strike on the batter. And slot now in scoring position. Out at second base. This one's fouled out of play. Two balls and two strikes. Two, two. Called third strike, catches the outside corner. Elias Mueller, I believe, is the new pitcher for Allen. right-hander and first pitch to Owen Rush misses the zone 1-0 and 1-0 pitch this one's popped up foul and out of play Grounder foul, pass first. One ball and two strikes. Swing and a miss. Ball gets away from the catcher. Throw down to first at high, but nice job by Anthony Talpa to bring it down and make the out. And that'll retire the Greyhounds here in the fifth. So no runs across the plate, but Fort Scott still has the lead. It's 7-3. to three. Greyhounds will go to the sixth in just a moment. This is Fort Scott Greyhound Baseball on Duck Bait TV. So Lucas Rodenberg back out there on the mound for the Greyhounds. He'll face the top of the order here in the sixth for Allen. First pitch in there for a strike. Got kind of a slow windup, but that ball gets on the hitter pretty quickly. Swung on, hit out towards right center field, coming over and making the catch is Aiden Scott, out number one. So 
Now K Kale Clark Kale Clark steps up. He's the DH here in game two. He was in the field in first game. He had a bunt single back in the first, but was stranded at third. He's since grounded out and flown out. Takes first pitch inside here, 1-0. and one -oh. 1-0 pitch is fouled off left side. Two and one. Two one pitch fouled off left side. So two balls and two strikes now with one out. Stretch in the 2-2. Cold strike three. So Kale Clark caught looking. And now two outs in the top of the sixth inning. First pitch to Garrett Rush is in there for a strike. Ground ball just foul past the bag at third. Pitch is outside, so one ball and two strikes now. One two pitch. This one's hit out towards center field. Going back on it is Stott, slot, and it's going to get over his head up against the wall. Rounding first, heading for second is Rush. He'll be in there standing up with a double. Now the ball gets away. Nice job to back it up there by Golunski, and that'll keep Rush at second base. But two doubles now for Garrett Rush, and he scored the last time he doubled back in the fifth. Now Parker Martin steps up. Still two outs. Now a runner in scoring position for the Red Devils. First pitch to Parker Martin is grounded to short. Throw is high, but in time. And that will retire the Red Devils here in the sixth inning. So we'll go to the bottom of the sixth in just a few moments. The Fort Scott Greyhounds still lead this one over the Allen Red Devils 7-3 here at Lions Stadium. This is Fort Scott Greyhound Baseball on Duckbait TV.
So leading off the bottom of the sixth here for the Greyhounds will be Mike Polabinski. It'll be the top of the order, one, two, and three. It'll be followed by Luke Stout and Jarrett Nelson. If anybody gets on, back to the catcher, Ty Golusky. Here's a ground ball on the first pitch out to short. Should be a pretty routine play. Nice throw there by Parker Martin, and that's out number one. Now Luke Stout will step in. Luke one for three so far today. Here's the first pitch to him in this at bat. Just off the inside corner, one and out. Ball hit through the left side, a base hit. Nice job by Luke Stout, his second hit of the day. Of the day. Now Jarrett Nelson will step in. Pitch is a little low and inside, 1-0. and oh. Pitcher's hat fell off as well. See that a lot of times when it's windy like this. Gus catches that hat at the wrong time. Off it goes, 2-0 oh the count. On the batter, Nelson. Jarrett has walked twice and scored twice in this game. Officially, though, 0 for 1. He flew out in his first at bat back in the first inning. 2 1 pitch, or it's 2 0 -oh pitch, rather, is a little bit low again. And a 3-0 pitch is low, so ball four. That's a good eye in this second game from Nelson as he's walked now three times. Each, team, each time. Each time he's Nelson's been on base, he's scored so far in this game. We'll see if that continues. As Ty Golusky steps up. Ty is one for three. First pitch here is fouled off left side. 0 oh and 1. Ty so far again, one for three in this game, second game. He singled his last time up back in the fourth. He's also struck out and flown out in this game. Oh, one pitch is fouled off left side. Oh, two pitch now. That one is low. One ball and two strikes. One-two pitch on the way. Oh, nice breaking ball that does catch the outside corner. Tough luck for Ty that time, but pretty good pitch. So now two outs. And 
Now Joey Little steps in. Little's homered and tripled in this game. He's also grounded out. Got some cloud cover here late in game two. Not much in game one. Really pretty gorgeous in game one. We had kind of look into the sun here as we're facing southwest here at Lions Stadium. But other than that, a really gorgeous day here. Wind is making it a little bit cooler than it probably would be otherwise. Here's the pitch. This is fouled off left side. But during the first game with the sun beating down on this turf field, as close as we are to the field here, you can kind of feel that it's some, some heat coming off of the turf. I don't know if anybody else felt that way, but I felt warmer in that first game because of that. Here's the 0-1. That's in... Well, almost set in the dirt. It's not possible <laughs> here anymore. With this all turf field, beautiful field. It's been here for a couple of years now. The turf on it anyway. The stadium's been here forever. Home of the Greyhounds for many, many years. Here's the pitch. Catches the inside corner, one and two. One, two pitch. Hit towards the right side. That's going to get through for a base hit. Coming around set third and st scoring is Stout. Excuse me. Yes, Luke Stout will score from second on the base hit. Nelson moves up to third. And the Hounds score another one on the seeing eye base hit there from Joey Little. Ford Dobrinsky now comes up. First pitch here. Hits it right side. Wind is going to carry that foul, and it's going to get out of play. Cord slammed his bat down as soon as he made contact. I think he thought, well, that's just a routine fly ball to right field, but that wind pushed it out of play. So he'll get another opportunity here. Just a long, loud strike. On a normal day, that probably would have been a fly out, routine fly out to right field. But the wind pushing it. Now pitch is high. So one and one. Runners on the corners. Two outs, bottom of the sixth. Greyhounds lead it eight to three. Trying to close out the sweep of this doubleheader here today. They trailed for much of game one, but won it in the eighth inning. Game that was scheduled to be seven. So this game should be our seven inning game now. Two and one the count. Here's the pitch. Outside. Ball three. Three balls and one strike. Here's the pitch. Popped up. This one looks like it might stay. Nope, it's not going to. It's going to get out into the Greyhound dugout. So a couple of foul balls there. 
Talk about the wind. We don't feel it down here on the field quite as much right now. But you look at the flags, and they're still out very briskly, so you get it up high enough. Those gusts will keep pushing the ball, and it worked out again, and now Cord has another opportunity here. Three and two to count on the DH. Two outs, two on. Bottom of the sixth. Runner goes from first, and the pitch is low and away. So after all that, Cord Dobrinsky works a walk, and the bases are now loaded again for the Greyhounds. As Aiden Slot will step up. First pitch to Aiden is just off the inside corner. One ball and no strikes. Can the Greyhounds add to their lead here? They've already got one run in in the frame. That one ooh, nearly hit the batter slot. He's able to get out of the way of it, though. 2-0. and oh. Two-zero pitch. This one's fouled off right side. Two balls and one strike now. And now the two-one pitch is low as well. So three balls and one strike. Now to Aiden Slot trying to. Add to the Greyhound lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Regardless of how many more they score here, could be a nice top of the seventh for the Greyhounds. That pitch is in there for a strike, so that'll fill the count again. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. The merry-go-round will start here as the pitch is delivered. And here comes the payoff pitch. Ground ball to third. They go back on it. He'll throw across the diamond. Is not in time and gets away. And two runs will score. They're going to try to send the third one. Here comes the throw to the plate. And it's going to get away. So three runs score for the Greyhounds. On down to second is slot. And now it is 11-3 Fort Scott. Started as Logan Martin at third. He waited on the hop. Trying to get a big hop that time and with slot speed. That was not the right decision, obviously, that time. And then he hurried the throw and threw it away. Foul ball here by Shigematsu. He is 0 for 3 here in game two. He was 3 for 4 in game one. Three singles in the only game, in the only at bat he got out in the first game was a line drive right to the first baseman. It's been a little bit more difficult here in game two for the Hawaiian second baseman for the Greyhounds. Two one pitch, off the inside corner. Two and two, or excuse me, three and one. Four runs have scored here in the inning for Fort Scott. 
We've had three crooked number frames up there on the scoreboard in this second contest. Pitch catches the outside corner, and that'll fill the count. So another full count from Elias Mueller, the pitcher for the Red Devils. Sports guy got one run in the second, but then three in the third, three in the fourth, and now four here in the sixth. Lead at 11 to three. That pitch off the inside corner, and another walk will give the Greyhounds another base runner. And now the head coach for the Red Devils making that slow stroll out towards the mound. This could be a pitching change for the Allen Red Devils. Have a discussion here. Maybe they're just going over strategy. Yeah, they're going to keep Mueller in there at this point. See if he can get the final out here. So Owen Rush will bat now as the ninth man to hit in the or in the inning for the Greyhounds. First pitch is fouled out of play, nothing and one. Runners on first and second, two outs, four runs already in here in the inning for the Greyhounds. They lead it 11-3. 0-1 pitch, a little bit outside to even the count. One-one pitch on the way, swung through and missed. One ball and two strikes. Mueller has the sign, now delivers, and one, two pitches fouled out of play. Ooh, sounded like they hit the bus. One, two pitch on the way, this one's fouled out of play again. One two pitch. Swung and a missed. So that'll retire the Greyhounds here in the sixth, but they played four more and they now lead it 11 to 3 as we head to the seventh. This is Sports Cat Greyhound Baseball on Duck Bait TV.
So we start the top of the seventh inning. The Fort Scott Greyhounds lead it 11 to nothing. And now nothing and two to count on the Red Devil batter, Anthony Talpa. That one misses, one and two. Misses as well. Two balls and two strikes. Ball hit out towards right field. Nice job by Aiden Scott to chase it down. And that'll be out number one. So center fielder ranging over to right center to make that play. And it's out number one of the seventh inning. Again, we were told this is the first time I've ever broadcast a Fort Scott Juco game. We were told earlier that the first game is scheduled for seven. The second game of the doubleheader is scheduled for nine innings. Unless the first game goes extra innings. And we didn't go nine in the first game, but we did have extra innings in the first game. So... Assuming this one will be the seventh or the seven inning game, and Fort Scott can get out of here with a victory if they get two more outs. First pitch is fouled off by Logan Martin. And now he hits one out towards center field again, coming in and making a diving play. Did he make the catch? They say he did. Aiden Scott, another highlight reel play for the Greyhounds. And that is out number two here in the seventh. So now Caleb Horsey will step in with two outs and nobody on. Man, that wind is really kicking up right now. And it's maybe shifted directions just a little bit. Maybe straight out of the south instead of the southeast. It's coming more in our face right now than it's been all day. One ball and no strikes. Pitch right back up the middle, and that's going to get through for a base hit. So the Red Devils stay alive here in the eighth or seventh inning. At least for one more batter, it'll be Tyler Martin, the catcher. Pitch to him is hit out towards center field. And coming over and making the play and finishing this one up is Aiden Scott. Once again, he retired all three outs here in inning number seven. And the Greyhounds come away with a doubleheader sweep, winning this one 11 to 3. So hang on for just a minute. Try to get your totals here.
All right. I think I've got everything totaled up now. Nice second game for the uh, Greyhounds as they win here in seven. It's 11 to three, the final score. A couple of big offensive game or offensive uh, outputs here for the Tiger or for the Greyhounds as Joey Little had a big second game, three for four, two runs scored, five RBI, and he finished a double shy of the cycle. Now he got his, his uh, triple and homer early. Then a ground out, then a single in his last at bat. So a, uh, a good day for Joey Little. He made several plays in the outfield as well out in left field. With the way the wind has been here all day, uh, just a great opportunity for uh, the outfielders to show their strength. And they were able to do that today for the Tigers. Of course, Aiden Scott in center field made the all three outs in the final inning of play. So a uh, good day here today for the Greyhounds as they uh, get the two wins over Allen and improve their record to 32-7 and seven overall and 12-4 and four in the Jayhawk Conference. Allen falls to 17-22 and 22 overall, 5-15 and 15 in the Jayhawk Conference. Your totals for today, Fort Scott, 11 runs on 8 hits, 1 error, 7 runners left on base, 3 runs on 11 hits uh, for Allen, Again, three runs on 11 hits, four errors, and 10 runners left on base. A lot of walks for the Greyhound hitters in this one. They also had some errors that they were able to reach and run around on. So, again, you don't see that very often. Fewer hits than, than runs, but that was the case for the Greyhounds here today in this one. The winning pitcher is JT Adams. He improves to 5-0 this season. Brandon McCarnan will get the loss for the Red Devils. And then Lucas Rodenberg, uh, it was a four-run game, but... He had the tying run come to the plate, uh, when, or coming to the plate when he entered the game. So he gets his fourth save of the season. So again, JT Adams improving to five and zero. Lucas Rodenberg gets his fourth save of the season for the Greyhounds, and they get the win. And again, it's number 32 on the year as they improve to 32 and seven overall, and again 12 and four in the Jayhawk Conference. So looking forward to. Our, the rest of our broadcast again next Saturday. We will be up the hill at Ty Kohler as the Greyhound softball team will be at home. And I've forgotten now who uh, they are playing that night So, uh, but or on Saturday. But there will be a doubleheader there for that one. And we'll have both of those games for you on Saturday from Ty Kohler Field up on the hill. I think they still call it Ty Kohler. Used to be Ty Kohler. And now the, when the, the high school baseball team played up there and now uh, the uh, – Greyhounds have taken it over and made it a really nice turf field and really nice facility for themselves up there on the hill. So uh, we'll see you, see you from up there next Saturday. And we've got a uh, softball, a high school softball game this week, and I cannot remember if it was Tuesday or Thursday. But anyway, we'll get more out on social media on that coming up uh, in the next couple of days. But a, uh, at least I believe it's this week. It might be next week. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll keep stay tuned to social media, and we'll let you know when we're going to be back out at uh, Fisher Park for the – uh, Lady Tiger softball team as well. This was fun. This was a, a really fun thing for me to come out and do, for us to get to come out and do. Uh, this week we got asked by one of our sponsors to come out uh, to some JUCO stuff this spring, and, and we're able to work a couple of game, uh, a couple of dates into our schedule. So we'll be back here at Lions Stadium for the baseball team on the 20th, and then next Saturday and May 4th, uh, we will be, I believe it's May 4th, I might have to check my dates, uh, but uh, we'll be at a couple of softball doubleheaders as well, including next Saturday for uh, the Greyhounds. And the softball Greyhounds have a phenomenal record as well this year. It has been a great season for the baseball and softball teams here at Fort Scott Community College to this point. We obviously hope that they keep that going. Uh, a little nervous that I might have been the bad luck, uh, some bad luck at the uh, beginning of this one here today as uh, Greyhound uh, uh, baseball team was behind pretty much the entire first game, but they were able to come back and get the win in walk-off fashion in game one. Uh, final score was 9-8 to eight and now uh, winning here game two, 11 to 3. Thanks again for joining us here on Duck Bait TV. We love to get out and, and bring you Fort Scott Sports, whether it's the high school or the junior college, and we're pleased and happy to be here. So thanks for joining us and a huge shout out to Coach um, On, on coach's name. But anyway, the coaching staff has been great um, to uh, work with us here 
uh, Coach Hill. There we go. A uh, huge shout out to Coach Hill. Sorry, Coach. Uh, huge shout out to Coach Hill and uh, the coaching staff and everybody that's been so great, uh, gracious, and helping us uh, get to get going today. They gave us a, a table to uh, to set up at, which was great, and uh, got us going. Got us the lineups in an incredibly timely manner uh, for both games. So uh, a huge shout out to uh, the folks here at the, with the JUCO for helping us out and getting us going. And we we are glad and happy to to be able to come back. Hopefully next spring we can do more uh, from a broadcast standpoint. Uh, just the couple dates here so far, and then we'll see what happens uh, postseason-wise for uh, the Greyhounds. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, we'll, that's down the road, and we'll let you know how that turns out. But uh, looking forward to uh, to the rest of our dates here this spring. Again, a limited schedule. We do have uh, a handful more uh, Lady Tiger, Fort Scott Lady Tiger high school softball games that we're going to do for sure. Um, and then, of course, the two Greyhound softball dates and then the back here on the 20th uh, for Greyhound baseball. So, anyway, thanks again for joining us. Again, the, tie, the Greyhounds get the uh, sweep here today, winning in walk-off fashion in Game 1. The final score there was 9-8, to eight, and then winning Game 2 here, 11-3. to three. Thanks again for joining us here today. For my camera operator, my dad, Willie Abatey, I'm Tony Abatey, and all the Duck Baits out there, thanks for joining us here on Duck Bait TV. And... Uh, probably presumably a, uh, a lot of new uh, folks uh, tuning in today uh, with the JUCO. So thank you so much for coming out and or for joining us here today. Very happy to be here and very excited to be back here on the 20th for more JUCO baseball. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, until next time, good night, Kansas.